it feels like, anyway, everything that you could possibly want, you've got as far as a starting point, as good as any starting point you've had since you've been here. Well, um, they really compete. They're talented. Um, they challenge, they fight every day, and then they're good friends after. I couldn't ask for anything more. Now, to be special, and I've had special teams here, you need veteran leadership. Wow, we do. Number two, you need separators or catalysts. Who are they? Anthony Davis, John Wall, Carl Ty We've had separators. Brandon Knight. Who are the separators on this team? Don't know yet. But if we're going to be special, two or three of the guys have to be able to do what Devin Booker did for a while, which is make every shot and put us up 18, and then you can ride home. Um, do we have that guy? Not yet. Do we need two or three of those guys? Yes, we do. I know you said you would never platoon again, but it, I mean, it looks difficult for you not to play nine yeah. guys. Well, we'll probably, there probably will be eight and the ninth man get some minutes and depending on games, how many minutes that ninth guy gets, I don't see us. Platooning was hard. It was, a, it was a bear for us. I did it so that every kid would have an opportunity. My plan was maybe down this stretch, go to seven, eight guys and it worked so well, we didn't lose any games. You would have changed. I couldn't change. And the Shot violation, shot clock violation. If that doesn't go, we probably win a national title playing that way. And six guys got drafted, four lottery picks. It helped everybody. Do I ever want to do that again? No, no. It's just, you know, it's hard. Uh, it's funny. You won't believe this. They, uh, people will use anything they can in recruiting against us, and that was something that I did to be good to every kid. Came out like he was bad to every kid. Like, what? And some families believed it, some didn't, but. This, this group, when, it, when they go to the Bahamas and then you say, well, Quade, well, his shot, he can't miss all those. Next thing you know, he's in the gym. And then the next thing you know, there's Keldon and Tyler's with him. And before you've had to talk about that, who's gonna be the breakfast club? You've had to yeah. ask for that. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't have to ask. I was here last night and uh, Heard thump as I walked in the office. I hear thump, 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 and and I look out here, and Kelvin's out here getting shots up, and I sit back down and hear it again, and all of a sudden, Emmanuel and Ashton, and PJ and Tyler, they all at some point come in to get shots up. My my thing to this group, and it's going to be vital. Your consistency builds your confidence. Not what I say, not what I do your consistency. If you're consistent, you will be confident. And then it doesn't matter what I say. If you're not consistent, you will never be confident. How do you become consistent? You get in the gym. We were shooting free throws at the end of our last weekend practice, and I said, you're responsible for your free throw shooting. If you're an 0 for 4 guy, you're not going to be in the game late. It doesn't matter who you are. You could stay with me at my house and if you're 0 for 4, you're not going to be in the game late. You're responsible for your free throws. This is like a man's world here. You know, you, you got kids that are being coached and challenged and held accountable like they've never been held accountable for in their life. So it's all a learning building process. We're trying to build successful behaviors. We're trying to build a culture that breeds responsibility to each other and to yourself, um, being held to a higher standard. That's this culture that we've built. Um, but again, you, the players, you ask, you know, what's gonna help you get to where you're going? Being the only guy that can play? I tell all these kids, if you walk in the gym and you are by far the best player in the gym. You're in the wrong gym. You don't want to be in that gym. If you walk in a gym and you look around and go, wow, and you're calling home, you can't believe how many good players we have. You're now in the right gym. 
numbers don't matter. You worry about being responsible for yourself, loving on your teammates, helping everybody get better, and if we're all doing that, everybody rises. Kind of what our culture is here. You said, I think it was EJ, you said before the Bahamas trip was maybe better than you expected. Has he kind of stayed ahead of the curve, or has he seen him come back? Now? The injury brought him back. His consistency with his skills is not where it needs to be, but he's probably our most talented big guy. Now, he needs to learn to fight on every possession, both on offense and defense. He needs to be more consistent with his skills so he'll become more confident. Um, and he'll tell you this is the hardest thing he's ever done. And I said, I kind of told you that. You did not believe me. Now that they're here and Ashton's here, they figured out this is really hard. When it comes to Reed, obviously he brings some leadership. Has there been a flip side at all that he's a few years older? I mean, or is he, is he settled right in and made some friends? And, and It's harder for him. It is. It's harder for him. And it's harder because what do you have in Con, you know, in, in, what's the connection with you and an 18-year-old, even a 19-year-old? So, but I get it. Um, but when he's on this basketball court, he really communicates and talks. The kids respect it. They respect him. When he's off the court, he's more quiet be, based on that's who he is. Um, but he also, uh, he went to the football game where they got it introduced and the guys were like, hey, you're out, you're out and about. Cause he's not like these kids, these are young kids and they're happy go lucky. And he's, you know, this is his fifth year in school. You know, Tyler Hero, I, I don't think anyone outside knew that he possessed that, that skill set. Did you know, I mean, there are things he's gonna do that I mean, can't be coached. But he's still, again, fighting on every possession. He's learning to defend better. His work ethic in this gym, if I come in here at 11 o'clock and the ball's bouncing or 12 o'clock, my guess is it's Tyler. So he's doing what Shea Alexander did a year ago. He is just motoring. The good news is a lot of times Shea was in here by himself. He is not. Like there'll be other guys that'll drift on in if he's in here. Um, his ability to score the ball, to make shots. Um, he has a swagger a little bit like Devin did. Like, I don't care what you're saying, I'm better than you think. Um, he, he elevates the shoot, so it's not a, he can get it off over you. Um, gotta defend better, gotta rebound in traffic, gotta play rougher, but he's going every day against Keldon, which is like, whoo, you know, which is war. But did you expect that, that scoring ability? I mean, you. You essentially added a potential leading score. Did you, did you think you I didn't. Getting... I didn't know. I, EJ, I didn't know how good he was. Now, EJ's not playing to where he was earlier, but he's, got, he's better than I thought he was. But so is Ashton, so is Emmanuel. Emmanuel's added to his game. Um, these guys are all better. Um, Reed's doing things that we're trying to get him to do to elevate his personal game and he's trying to get better at those. PJ's not even the same guy he was, neither is Nick, neither is uh, Quad A. Quad A's body, when you see his body, you're gonna say, wow, look at that. And so they're, they're being responsible for themselves. And uh, you know, that's important. Those three coming back, uh, it feels like they have a different perspective, knowing what the NBA wants from them, what they have to do to get there. It seems like, you know, last year they're feeling out, this year it's, it's all business, kind of. There's an anxiety if you've not played for Kentucky or me. That it's natural that these freshmen have. Those three don't have. So it's not so much what the NBA and all this. There's a, a comfort level of what to expect every day and how I coach, how I notice everything. Like there's nothing that's going on in here that I'm not noticing. What the challenge of staying up with the practice Mm -mm. beat the practice. They know that now. They didn't know it a year ago. So they have a comfort level. And I'm going to be honest with you, the trip to the Bahamas made us all a little more comfortable in what this was about because we had practice time. We had games. Now, I didn't coach the games, but it didn't matter. I coached every practice. They were playing the way I wanted them to play. They now know, okay, there's a comfort level. We can work, and there is no anxiety.
Now that doesn't mean we think we're there, but it just, I know what to expect. So let's get after this. You mentioned the uh, basketball, or the uh, football game. PJ got the loudest <clears throat> ovation when announced. Do you think he's embraced this kind of, you know, for this urinary face of the program, knows what he needs to be? He's been better. Now he's got to go in and, um, you know, continue to be more consistent. Um, I want him to drive the ball. He's got to get better with the ball. You can't just leave your feet and throw passes. He's got to, he's got to get that down where he's learning, uh, and it creates a habit. But you know, he's, he's a great kid. Um, I think he came in and last year, what was where he needed to go and where he was didn't match. Then he had to lose, if you remember, 17 pounds. And then he became this guy. Now he's that guy, now be more consistent. Shooting the ball, shooting free throws, decision making, passing, um, having your feet move fast but not your mind, being able to go hard and not just have to get rid of it. You know, where you can go hard knowing that you're gonna come to a stop. All stuff that we can help him with. Um, but his athleticism, his length, the length of his arms, his ability to rebound in traffic, his toughness, um, he's going to be one of those guys. I know um, you're worried about you, your team. you got enough to worry about there. But, of course, you're playing a Duke team to begin the season that has a you know, few guys on it that maybe you would have liked to have seen come here. Uh, how is that opening with that game? I don't like that we're opening with a game that strong and not, not – that it's Duke, it could be 10 teams. Um, you don't like to open a season without at least a game under your belt. Um, so it's going to be hard, but good news, it's going to be hard for them too. I mean, it's going to be a hard game for both of us to play and coach and really make adjustments and do stuff because they're brand new teams. His team is brand new, my team is brand new. So I don't like it, but I know everybody in the world is looking forward to it. So. We'll show up and play the game and um, hopefully be prepared enough to be able to perform in the game. It's going to be hard. You can't. It's November early. You're not going to have be great on your zone, offense, zone defense, your press. You're not going to be good in your press attack, your side out of bounds, your baseline out of bounds. How's your man offense? You can't. How are we going to play pick and rolls? Are we going to do it three ways? What are we going to trap the post? What are we going to, if they trap the post, how? What? It's November. So you hope you have enough in to be able to perform in that game and give your guys a chance.